Hi friends, today I want to talk a little bit more about Power BI and how we can use it to visualize and dashboard the data loaded through Autodesk data exchanges. This will be a more in-depth and detailed walkthrough discussing the steps to create and load a data exchange into Power BI, set up a simple dashboard using our viewer, but also the standard Power BI visuals to visualize the data and also to perform quality checks, for example, uh, to create a list of all elements without an assembly ID. Then we will load a second data exchange and have a look at how we can use the federated view to aggregate both data exchanges into the same viewer. Last but not least, we will briefly discuss how to share and publish your dashboards. If you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Leila, a recovering architect and a technology enthusiast working at Autodesk. As a reminder, there are several ways to create a data exchange. But the most straightforward one for Revit users is using Autodesk Docs, where you can simply navigate to a view which you ideally prepared in a way that it contains only the elements you wish to share through a data exchange. And then simply hit Create Data Exchange. You can obviously change the name of the exchange and also the folder where this data exchange is stored. I will repeat now the same steps also for the HVAC model as we will need it later. You can also review the data exchange on ACC and I will uh, copy the URL because this makes the loading in Power BI a lot easier. Now we can go to Power BI. If you have not installed the Power BI connector yet, please do that now. You will find the link to the Autodesk App Store in the video description. Once the connector is installed, just search for Autodesk and pick the Autodesk data connector for Power BI. Here you need to select a data exchange and then you can simply enter your URL. Now let's also have a look at the, the optional fields here. We can specify another unit of length if we want to use different units than the original file. We don't want to do that here, so we leave that on the default setting. Um, what I would definitely recommend you to do is to check out the filters. Select yes here and proceed to the next window. As we have used the URL, we are brought directly to the data exchange and after selecting it, we can see the filters and the available properties. The first option lets you filter down the data exchange and load only the categories, types or families that you really need in your dashboard. This makes sense if you don't want to overload the Power BI report with unnecessary data. Since uh, we have already extracted only subsets, I won't use this option now. In the next dropdown, we can also specify which properties we want to load. As you can see, Revit exports a lot of properties you will probably never use in your dashboards. So it is really recommended to filter down to the necessary data in this step. I won't do that now for this demo. In the next field, you can specify the reference properties coming from Revit. These can be levels, reference levels, phases, hosts, types, and so on. I select level here so that we can later visualize the elements per level. Now let's proceed and load this data. Once the data is loaded, you will notice it in the data pane on the right side. The first thing we want to do is to add our viewer visual so that we can see the model. For this, we will load a custom visual which has been installed with the connector. It will appear below the other Power BI visuals on the right and you can easily add it to your dashboard. The viewer comes with the integrated instructions and the easiest way is to search for viewer in data pane on the right and drag it to the first field. Don't pick the federated viewer, that's meant for something else and we'll explore that a little bit later. You might notice that as soon as you populate the first field, the model will be loaded. But please search for the external element ID as well and drag it to both of the other fields in order to establish the connection with visuals. This will allow you to have an interactive dashboard where you can select elements in one place and highlight them in all the other visuals. 
Let me show you how this works. Uh, let's pick a pie chart and add the Revit categories to it. We want to count the elements per category, so we will add the external element ID again in the second field. As you can see, the visual is instantly populated and we can easily edit the appearance or also the title in the visual properties on the right. In this case, we also have some categories like levels, which we don't want to include here. If you want to include only specific categories in the visual, you can simply use the filters for this visual and, for example, exclude all the categories that are not relevant in this case, like levels or views. Now we can test our connection by selecting a category from the visual. As you can see here, the viewer reflects the selection and highlights all the elements which belong to the selected category. Of course, we can also create tables. For example, let's pick the Revit category and type to create a schedule of all floor types and their area. For this, we will start by adding the Revit category and type as columns. Now we will filter the visual so that it only shows the floors category. In the next step, let's search for area and add it to our table. As you can see here, we will instantly get all the values and also the total area of all the floors in the building. You might notice that this table is two-dimensional and there is also a multi-dimensional table in Power BI, which we can use to create a more complex overview of elements per level. For this, let's first drag our reference level into the visual and then add the category. As you can see, they will be nested automatically. And if I add now the type as well, that will be another nested level. Again, we can filter only for specific categories at this point if needed. Now I want to create an overview of all elements which have no assembly ID. This might be very useful in model checking workflows as it gives an instant and simple overview of the model quality. For this, we will first add the element IDs as well as the element names to the visual and specify which categories we want to include. Then we will add the assembly code and set another filter to show us only the elements with blank values. You can now also remove the empty column from the visual and still keep it in the background as a filter. Now we want to load the second data exchange, our HVAC model. In this case, I won't use the URL or any advanced options and show you how it works if you directly navigate to your ACC project and folder. As you can see, using the URL definitely saves you a bit of time. Note that if we do not select a filter in the previous dialog, uh, it won't be available in this step. Uh, so you won't be able to filter the Revit categories or the properties or also load the Revit reference properties. So keep this in mind. Once the HVAC model is loaded, we can start populating the visuals with its data. We could also pull in a second viewer to visualize the HVAC model in the same way as we did with the structural model. However, I want to have an aggregated view and see HVAC and the structural model in the same viewer. For this, we will need to create a relationship between our data exchanges, and that's actually very straightforward. For this, we will need to switch to the model view, where you will find both data tables representing our data exchanges. Look for the federated viewer mapping in both tables and drag one of them onto the other one. Simply confirm the default settings recommended by Power BI and you are done. Now we can go back to our dashboard and add the viewer data and the external element IDs along with the ones from the structural model. As you can see here, now both models are visible in the same viewer. It is important to understand, however, that currently we cannot relocate or move the models. So this only works if the models have the same origin. And in the case of Revit files, this means the same Revit internal. Now we can uh, add additional visuals and extract and filter the data from the HVAC model as well, just like we did with the structural model. I will also change the title in this case and the appearance of the visual to better fit my needs. 
Since uh, we also have added the external element IDs uh, from the HVAC model to our viewer, it will allow us um, the interaction between the data coming from the HVAC model in the same way as with the structural model. Once you have created your dashboard, you can share it with your colleagues or publish it. The available options will depend on the Power BI license you have. In general, Power BI for desktop is free for all business and educational users who are linked to Microsoft 365. So this means you cannot use it with a Gmail address, for example. This free Power BI version allows you to create dashboards in the desktop version only. If you want to publish the dashboards, you will need the Pro version, which is the highest license you can have and which allows you to share the dashboards and collaborate without any restrictions, including sharing the dashboards with free users. Um, I also find this a little bit complicated and I will link you the Microsoft documentation in the video description for further reference. Once you publish your dashboard, you can share it with your colleagues through a link, or you can also embed the reports in SharePoint, a website or an own app. A website can also be your ACC Insights board. So I'll go ahead and copy the link and then head over to ACC. Here we can add a new card, select Power BI and simply enter previously copied URL. By doing this, you can share your dashboard with everyone who has access to your ACC Insights board. There is, of course, a lot more to be said about visualizing data in Power BI, and this was just the start. Please feel free to leave a comment and also include requests for features you would like to see covered in the next videos. Thanks for watching and may the data be with you.